now that you're familiar with the collar, the five-year millionaire works basically off the same concept, except we try to make our money through short option premiums instead of stock appreciation. If the stock appreciates, that's great. But how many times have you bought a stock because your brokers told you, over the long run, stocks go up 10.4% a year? Well, anyone that's been in the stock market for the last 10 years has seen that the stock market is unchanged over the last 10 years. So that, that, that saying that your brokers have to try to entice you into opening an account and investing with them doesn't always work. Now, an argument can be made that it works over long, long periods of time, but sometimes those positions will be a longer period of time than your time on this planet. So what we've done with the five-year millionaire is we've made the assumption that stocks don't always trend higher, sometimes they trend lower, and sometimes they just don't move. A short history of Microsoft, Microsoft from 19... Uh, let's say, 86 up until maybe 2000, was one of the greatest stocks in the world. Everybody wanted to own Microsoft. Why? Because every year the stock would double, they would split the stock, you'd have twice as many shares, and then the stock would go back to original price before it doubled, or split, excuse me. And, and so what you did is you held on to it for a year, and you owned twice as many shares at the same price it was trading at the year before. People made fortunes off of this. As a matter of fact, sometimes you'd see articles written in Time Magazine about how the guy in the mailroom at Microsoft was driving Ferraris. It was a great stock. However, once the market determined that it was fairly valued and noticed that Microsoft's stock and growth was no longer appreciating at geometric rates, the stock got into line with a normal, mature stock price. And then it just sort of stuck there. And it became very, very stagnant stock. It was stuck literally in a $2 range for many, 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 many months. <coughs> well, the great thing about the five-year millionaire is even if your stock is stuck just at one certain price, you can still make 10% in a month if you, if you know what you're doing and how the strategy works. As a quick overview of how this works, is we'll go back to this collar position once again. We bought a put and we sold a call, and we were long stock. We are have the same sort of position on with the five-year millionaire. The only difference is we're going to adjust the strikes differently than we would with the collar. This slide shows you a basic overview of how we look at the five-year millionaire. We know when we're buying puts, we have to buy options, and they're going to cost us money. And when we sell a call to pay for the puts that we bought, we're selling options, and we're going to be taking premium in. <clears throat> the key to this strategy is to buy options on the low end of the normal distribution curve of option premium prices, and then sell the more expensive options on the normal distribution curve of option premiums. Now, for those who've never seen this before, this is a normal distribution curve. Sometimes it's called a bell curve. People who are my dad's age and older may recall that it's called a Gaussian curve. But all options are priced off of this normal distribution curve. And sometimes there's a little skew in there, but that's not necessary for this application. But the at-the-money options will always have the most time value. So we're going to sell options that have the most time value and buy options that have very little time value. Thus, we'll receive a net credit on, this, on the collar position that we're placing, which in a sense turns it into a five-year millionaire in a remedial form. There's other steps that we'll go into later on, but that's the overview of the thinking behind this. And, and the best way to understand it is actually through a case study. <coughs> Okay. On 1-18-2010, we were doing a webinar. And what a webinar is, is Random Walk has every quarter approximately a school semester of webinars that are done online. Now, in semester five, 
or semester, you know, semester four, excuse me, we entered into a trade in TiVo. And the stock was suppressed a little bit. It was trading on extremely high volatility. I think the implied volatility options at the time was about 130. Not much was going on, but volatility was very high. So we entered into a position where we wanted to buy the stock. Now, there's two ways to buy, or excuse me, three ways to buy stock. You can actually go out and physically buy the stock. You can go out and buy a call, which gives you the right to buy the stock, and then exercise that call. If you have the right to buy the stock and you exercise that right, you're buying the stock. Or we can sell a put. Now, remember, anyone who buys a put has the right to sell a stock. Therefore, the person who sold the put has the obligation to buy the stock. If someone has the right to sell it and they force that right on us, we have to buy it from them. So the sale of a put can result in the purchase of a stock. But selling a put, even if the stock is only trading for $10, is still very, very risky. So what we did is, instead of just selling a naked put, we sold 10 contracts of the 10, 7.5 put spread in February to initiate the 5 million air trade. And we went and followed the exact criteria that was followed and written in the book, The Essentials Course. Now, the stock is up a tad overnight trading, thus we had to lower our price. Initially, when we were doing the webinar, we put the trade in at, to try to sell the put spread at $1.12. The stock opened up a little bit higher the next morning, so we lowered our price from $1.12 down to $1.09 and was filled. Okay, and I want to emphasize one thing very clearly right here. We are, when we do these webinars, we send out traditionally at the end of each session, two paper trades to illustrate exactly what we were teaching in that webinar so that people could follow along. Now, what I want to emphasize is that Random Walk does not enter these trades in with actual real money, but we enter them in through our broker's website into a paper trade account to see if we could realistically get filled on these trades, but we don't want to trade it with real money for legal reasons. And the legal reason is this. We tell all of our students, when you're learning a new st strategy, do not trade with real money. We do not want people following along, learning something new with real money. When you're in medical school, you don't start practicing cutting on live people. You practice cutting on dead people because you can't hurt them. So you start cutting on cadavers. Well, we don't want you hurting your trading account, so we tell you to trade with paper money. But some people are just are going to ignore us, and we don't want to be accused of front-running or any other illegal activity by actually putting trades in in anticipation that somebody else may be helping our price. So these are just paper trades, and I want to make that real clear. So what we did is we put the trade in, we lowered it to 109, and we were filled. 